So let's start with what autism is. Autism spectrum disorder or autism is a neurodevelopmental condition of variable severity and it's characterized by three concerns social interaction, communication and restricted or repetitive patterns of behavior which may or may not be accompanied with sensory behaviors, needs or activities. These signs are usually seen during early childhood, before the age of two and last throughout an individual's lifespan. So when are these signs noticed? Some parents report that these delays are seen very early in the child's life and motor and verbal milestones may not be met at all. Some other parents report that the child would be developing normally till the age of one and then around the first birthday, they will see that there is a bout of ill health and then the child experiences regression. That regression may be in loss of their social smile, they may lose words, sentences or gestures that they previously had, they may start appearing clumsy or they may appear to be lost in their own world. Now if you suspect that your child does need the uh, diagnosis for autism, what is it that you need to look for? So we have three symptom clusters that you need to look for. The first will be difficulties with communication, the second will be difficulties with social interaction and the third will be repetitive and restricted interest. So let's go through this in a little bit of detail. So with the difficulties in communication, the child might have difficulties in expressing themselves. Now given that this is a spectrum disorder, some children might have very few words. And in this case, they may not use pointing, but they may hold your hand and pull you towards an object. They may also help themselves to whatever they want by pulling a chair or dragging a stool and getting on top of it. Other children who have words to express what they would like to say may talk about things that are of interest to them. So they may speak about cars, they may speak about logos, uh, alphabets, numbers or places that they may have visited. They may also have difficulties with listening attentively when someone is speaking to them. They may engage in monologues and will have difficulty following conversational rules. You might find that your child has an unusual prosody, so they might copy the tone or accent of a TV character of a cartoon that they watch regularly and they would have unusual tone, pitch or rhythm. The second one is difficulty with social interactions. So the child will have a lot of difficulty reading a social situation and finds it very hard to modify their behavior based on the mood and tone of the person that they're communicating with. The child may be totally lost in their own world and may seem to have no interest in social relationships at all. While other children with ASD might find it difficult to understand how to make friends, how social rules operate, and they might want to make friends and they might reach out to other children their own age but they may not understand how group games work. So while other children are playing, they may play alongside them but they may be on the periphery. So the primary caregiver would say that you know my child can read me and can read my tone and mood and can you know change their own behavior but in most cases this does not get generalized to other people. Now the last symptom cluster is restricted repetitive patterns of behavior which may or may not be uh, accompanied with sensory behaviors, needs or activities. So you might find that your child has certain motor movements or sounds that they keep repeating. They use an object or a part of it to keep on playing with. So this could be a piece of string, it could be a small bit of paper, it could be wheels of a toy or an eraser which they spin in their hands. Uh, some children also have an insistence on the sameness and they may like to eat the same food every day or wear the same clothes every day and they want an unchanging and predictable routine. Any change in this might upset them a lot, trigger a lot of anxiety in them and it may take very long for them to settle down. So along with this you might find that your child prefers certain types of food or completely avoids certain food groups like fruits, juices, yogurts and rice. They may take the food, smell it before they eat or they may avoid wearing certain clothes which are made of certain types of textures or have zippers, tags or buttons on it. And they may look at objects which are shiny or have some sort of light in them. So they might look at the fan and see it spinning and may be very interested in that. Some children might appear to be extremely affectionate and keep wanting to hug you. But actually they're seeking pressure while doing that. 
while other children might not accept any sort of touch especially on the head or arms and a lot of parents uh, of young children report that they have difficulties with cutting their nails and getting hair cuts done. Now if you notice any of these symptoms or all of these symptoms, what is it that you need to do? So first point of contact would be to meet your pediatrician and rule out any sort of organic issues that might be associated. So your pediatrician might ask you to get a hearing or eye test done. They may also ask you to get genetic tests done to rule out fragile X or Rett syndrome and check for repetitive strep infections that might mask as AST. Once all organic issues have been ruled out, you will be asked to meet a group of allied health professionals, which would include a psychologist, an occupational therapist and a speech therapist. So when you set up your appointment, be prepared to spend at least two to three hours per discipline because they will go through a very detailed history of, your, uh, of the child's birth and also of the milestones that the child may or may not have met in their young, uh, young childhood. Once all the assessments have been done, you will get a detailed profile of your child's strengths and challenges. None of the procedures done by the allied health therapists will be invasive and no medicines will be prescribed by anybody. Now, you will see that there will be a spectrum of symptoms that your child has and there will be varied severities. Now, each child will be unique in their own set of strengths and challenges and you might find that your child doesn't have any behavioral concerns but they have issues with communication or language. Other children might have sensory issues which impact their language development or their behavior. So you have to try and see that comparison between children with ASD is just not possible. If you have seen one child with autism, you have only seen that one child with autism. And another big misnomer that there is, is that children with ASD have savant skills. That is not the case. There are very few children with ASD who would have a giftedness in maths or for memory for numbers or for roots. More often than not, you will find that your child will be extremely restless or hyperactive, may have difficulties with learning. And so you might end up with a comorbid diagnosis along with ASD. Now, once you've got your evaluation and you have been through this entire process, what is it that you need to do? So there's a fund of knowledge available about ASD. Uh, try not to get overwhelmed by it. You are going to be the biggest advocate for your child. So you need to educate yourself about ASD. You're going to be the common link between the therapist, the school and your extended support network. So the more educated and accepting you are of the diagnosis, the better it is going to be for your child. Start interdisciplinary therapy for your child as soon as possible. Early intervention is the way to go. So speech, language, occupational therapy, behavior therapy and learning support is extremely important to give your child. When you choose a center, make sure that you check the credentials of the center and make sure that all the therapists who work with your ch child are licensed and board certified. Uh, if possible, try and attend the sessions with your child. If in case you cannot do that and you are asked to wait outside, try and get as much of feedback as you get can get in the sessions and ask a lot of questions because your child will only receive intervention few times a week. The rest of the time they're going to be with you at home. So the more you practice, the more you work with them, the faster the child will learn to generalize those skills in the real world. Stay consistent with the approach that you select. Uh, change comes very slowly. So try not to jump from one intervention center to another or jump from one mode of intervention to another. Just stay with the one approach that you have chosen. Uh, please try and avoid any sort of medication or intervention that claims to cure autism or induce speech in your child. Scientific evidence suggests that there is no cure for autism and there are no medicines that can induce speech. Just to sum up, autism is a part of your child's life. It is not your child. Like some of us are tall, some of us are short, some might have sporting abilities, others may not. Your child is also neurodiverse. Let your child have the childhood that every other child has. Try, try and take your child out to as many public functions and places as you can. Initially, it can be very challenging and very difficult, 
but as you keep doing this you will find that the child learns to navigate these situations quite well the other thing is as a caregiver you will feel a range of emotions you may feel angry you may feel sad you might feel a little guilt and it is not easy to talk to our families or your significant other because they may be having shared emotions as well so if you need to seek professional help please do that please accept help especially if you are the primary caregiver try and do things that you previously did that were enjoyable to you try and get reliable help where you can leave your child safely for a couple of hours a day and they are again fully engaged it's extremely important to care for yourself unless you care for yourself you cannot look after your child try and make your significant other or people who cohabitate with your child which can be grandparents a part of the process so from the diagnosis to going to therapy to knowing what the child does at school try and share and discuss as much as possible with other people in the home it will really really help your child and lastly encourage independence in your child it's very easy for us to rush our child and try and do everything for our child because it's much faster but in the long run it is extremely important that you let your child make mistakes learn from those mistakes and make it easy on the child by saying making mistakes is fine the more the child experiences real life and experiences doing things on their own they will find a sense of self esteem and confidence going forward